we didn't actually get to do a, a reaction to Inside Star Citizen this week because I was on a plane flying from the U.S. to Turkey. So now that we're here, not quite set up in our in our place yet where we're going to stay, but I got this temporary little single PC stream set up. And since we're we're all here and I haven't seen the episode, I figured why don't we watch this live all together and see what they've got for us in this week's episode of Inside the Star Citizen. I think my favorite alien species in Star Citizen, if I had to pick one, if I had to, I love them all. Pico. Yeah, I have a deep fondness for the Banu. I like the visual architecture. They just seem like kind of cool critical thinkers. The Pico Shion does. I'm Pico's closest to thinker. mentally, meaning I know more about them than all of the others. <laughs> They're like the Man, we chill, never relaxed see Brian Chambers anymore. Even though they're so friendly, they look like they can pack a punch, you know? So far, the ones that have piqued my interest is the one one. They're the, the predators of the space in our universe. And they look really kind of fierce and ferocious. You know, when you encounter them, um, you know you're in a lot of trouble. But they're alien race. Probably the Vandal. There's no alien ship better than the um, the Talon. Isn't the Talon Tabaran? It is Tabaran, yeah. But the Tabarans themselves, I'm not keen on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the Vandula, they just tick all the right boxes for me. I want to see Pico's first ship Alien manufacturer. Week is here, and with it, our annual celebration of Xeon, Banu, Tavarin, and even the dreaded Vandul. And if you haven't already, check out the various contests and activities happening across social on the robertspaceindustries.com website. But for us here at ISC, we thought we'd take this week to dedicate entirely to exploring the current status of the highly anticipated Banu Merchantman. See, that's pretty cool. I like that they're gonna focus on this ship because we've only gotten like bits and pieces. I like that they're gonna give us a pretty solid look at it. Sounds like it kind of got a little bit redesigned. Let's see what they've got. Now, warning, much of it is still in gray box or- Also, no new concepts. Kind of surprising. Early white box phase. Still, there's a lot to explore of its mysterious interior. Let's find out more. I think when tackling a ship that's got so many unknowns about it, it's a you know, completely new art style, or it's not something that a lot of the team kind of worked on before, we kind of need to make sure that we're... Wait, were those all... Not something that... Are those all supposed to be merchantmen? No, because they don't have the split wings. What are those? Are those Vanduul ships in the background? I don't even recognize the ship design. Something pretty. That a lot of the team kind of worked on before. We kind of need to make sure that we're approaching it in the most sensible way we can. Inside the Merchant Man. Name All right, Bruno. so some old thunder. We are jumping in with our devs. Uh, we have got uh, vehicle art director, Mr. Ben Curtis. Hello. Hello. And senior vehicle <laughs> designer, Mark hi. Gibson. Hi. Right hi. And we are going to be showing the very real, very current uh, progress of the Banu Merchantman. Before we get into it, let's talk a little bit about where we are. Uh, in that process. Uh, ben, we know the Banu Merchantman has been in development for a while and it's not in development. Set this up for us. Where are we at uh, overall? Um, the okay, a couple things I'm looking to hear about. I'm really hoping they give any little bit of insight into the gameplay surrounding this game because they're designing and designing and building, but like we know at this point that ships aren't supposed to come into the game without their major features working. That doesn't... End with the raft, that didn't mean the crane worked, but the cargo worked, right? With the 400i, I don't honestly know the story with that. It's an exploration ship without an exploration table. I don't know. With the hull A, same thing, right? The, the, the cargo thing didn't work, but you could still cargo haul. So is this going to actually come into the game with a player controllable shop? Maybe we can't do all of the meetings and the NPC interactions and the docking and all that stuff. But will this give us the ability to have a sort of a shop in the ship? Or are they just going to throw this in there and not do anything? The other thing I'm looking to, to hear more about is... Um, uh, oh, what kind of things they're changing about this now that they're moving from a small ship of an alien species to a large one? Because this is the first alien large ship, I think. Which is a pretty big deal because interiors aren't something we got to see much of when it comes to aliens before. 
the exterior is going through its gray box pass. Um, so it's looking a little bit more advanced than um, the interior of the ship that we'll see in a bit. Um, we've basically got two artists on it and we kind of chop the ship up into different um, parts that they can work on. And um, we're just going through and making sure that everything that needs to fit in the ship is going to fit in the ship. And it's worth noting that this is a landmark uh, a ship for Star Citizen. This is this is one of the biggest ships of its kind. Uh, it's got entirely new purposes with the shops and everything inside. It's 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 pushing an, or an alien race into a new size and scale that we've never done with any of the other uh, you know ships outside of Squadron Forty Two. Uh, there is a lot uh, to this ship. So with that, let's jump on in and start with the exterior. So we've got the entire front with its hidden weapons. So that's what everybody's hating on, right? Is the front side there. But honestly, gray box wise, I'm assuming they're going to throw some extra geometry on there once they're done with the uh, gray box. Uh, to come out from there. For, gray box is kind of like... White box gets the general shape. Gray box starts to hollow out the spaces that are more particular. It doesn't get super detailed. This actually looks really detailed for gray box i think some of the stuff is past the gray box stage but the gray box stage is still missing a lot of the detail that makes the ships look good you've seen some ships look pretty not great on gray box and then uh do pretty well final art wise now for the pilot control it's dual docking collars one on either side it's wings with the new animation designs for them for how they're actually gonna deploy as you can see there's a lot of detailing on the wing section a very yeah. elaborate and almost elegant design on it because it looks at the end of this is something they use as a trademark to show how wealthy they are and well they're doing as a trader that's a lot of detail even for gray box face yeah it's a new art style we've, you know, we've done like... the defender obviously but for the the uk team it's, it's a kind of new art style and also you know the defender is vastly smaller in terms of its size there's a our normal kind of approach to how we kind of layer in the details um, has needed a bit of kind of alteration. Wow, that um, cockpit doesn't have, look like it has much visibility. Kind of layer in the details um, has needed a bit of kind of alteration. Um, and we've had to kind of think about kind of how we're going to bring in some visibility. of those smaller scale elements to give a better sense of size and scale. Because, you yeah, know, when you zoom out from this ship, you still want it to feel huge. And, and you know, it deserves to feel huge. It is absolutely monstrous. Um, so I think, you know, we've, we've had to spend a bit more time working out how we're going to add detail to it there's still a lot to be done there's still a lot of the, the finer details to be added um because that does impact in how we how we model the ship how we make the ship so yeah it's, it's been it's been you know a fun challenge for the artist so far i understand there was a recent change to the animations yep i'll have to go again oh they were very quick Oh, the Ooh. animation is nowhere near a final. It was just to make sure we got it in. <laughs> I think it's okay. a fair disclaimer for this. Absolutely no part of what you're seeing today. Yep. It's fine. I was like, I've never no, seen the, the uh, Why did they go away Max, it? and they were a, a little bit, um, felt a bit weightier and a bit sleeker than that. Um, but yeah, there, there is some kind of subtle movement where you know, panels open up. That's pretty up, cool. Um, they're kind of telescoping. It'll be great when they're slowed down. And they All the ship animations the, in this game the, are pretty the fast. Of, like, the rest of the wings to slide in. And, you know, as with everything we do, we make sure that there's not space magic going on. Things actually kind of uh, fit and function as they should. Um, so, yeah, you know, it gives a few more challenges. Um, but I think the end result is is a much nicer kind of silhouette when you That's see this in part. Cool. Let's the move inside and start with the bridge since we're the already The way the different pieces kind of stagger okay, so, in the way um, they move. Yeah, the really interior cool. of the ship, like I say, is, is the main... Um, well, you're going to see now, um, it's mainly in kind of white box. The concept mesh um, gave us like a really good starting point. Um, as always with, with concept meshes, we had to do, you know, a fair So that really was the visibility from the um, front. So, uh, That's actually, you get a lot of visibility on the top, but you definitely have that whole bottom half just gone. And for a big ship like this, um, Yeah, the interior of the ship, like I say, is mesh um, gave us like a really good starting point. Um, as always with, with concept meshes, we had to do you know, a fair amount of kind of optimizations and remodeling to kind of get it to the point where we can get it into engine and kind of start walking around it. The, the bridge is, um, try, I'm trying not to say the same thing for every area. It's massive. Um, <laughs> and and that, you, know, you can just 
any any area of the ship you go into, just know that in the back of my head, I'm thinking it's huge. Yeah, you know, we've, we've obviously got the kind of like the the four control seats. And Mark, do you want to talk through the different functionality? Why stations? is it massive yeah. though? Is that so, a Banu thing? Uh, as ever, the the Banu don't have captains. They they're a very family communal sort of unit. So it didn't make sense to have a, a primary captain station for the bridge section. In reality, everything would be relatively even. So we have the, the pilot seat and control, which obviously with a ship at this scale, it's very difficult to get a good view from the pilot seat to get a good view of what's actually happening. So a lot of the animations need to be very alien so that you can get the pilot into a good position so they'd be able to see what they're doing. So we, we use a lot of Zion tech, which lift things up through gravity so they can get this fantastic view out the front so you can see where you're actually going. So you've got your primary pilot seat. Need one of these in the compass. Right of them, you have your co-pilot seat. Then two stations behind are for the large remote turrets that the ship has for defense. So if you ever need it, people can quickly jump into these seats and get oh, into the room action is to try and defend you from whatever's happening if it's coming up behind or the sides. Obviously, if it's coming on front, the pilot has more than enough means to be able to deal with it themselves. And if your instinct was to stop the YouTube video and go immediately to comments and say, it's pronounced Sheon, Mark, get a better hobby. Oh, I'll say you'd be correct. <laughs> that's not Directly even a hobby, that's a pastime. where the actual operations occur, you have some basic features for if stuff Correcting goes people in YouTube so you have comments some suit lockers to put emergency suits in. So obviously the they're not going to want to go more, around guys. in their day-to-day -day lives they wearing a spacesuit all the time. But if something goes wrong, they do want them to hand. So... Next to the actual escape pods, you have your suit lockers to quickly get suited and booted and then be able to get into your escape pod and get out of there if you need to. So they have one on either side, one for each of the actual crew that would be on the bridge, as wow. well as a couple of extra. What a freaking cockpit. Leading a little further down, we actually have the, the more habitation side of the ship, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get there. Directly behind, we also have the entryway to get inside the main man turret. This is kind That's of a small one of the rooms we spent a bit of time oh my gosh. Kind of playing with in white box and making sure we got it right. Um, we really wanted this to kind of feel. Um, Who so even make sure makes we... a turret room this fancy? Fucking Banu. Like, seriously, they, this is full on. What's it called? Uh, the thing with the guy and the stuff, you know. X Men. Oh, uh, Cerebro. This is like Cerebro. It was a turret. I'm about to roll out here with my wheelchair and go and blow up some Vanduul ships from my traveling bazaar. That is the wow. I love it. I want one of these in my Mercury. We got it right. Uh, we really wanted this to kind of feel, um, you know, like quite a moment walking into it. Yeah. Uh, Go on, Josh. No, no. It, it, okay. Even even in gray box, this is quite a moment here. Yeah, there, there was some really nice bits in the kind of concept where you had these kind of like um, these these like lit walls, and we tried to kind of pull some of that into. And I think it's almost having that kind of moment of um, uh, like solitude before you kind of get yoinked up into to battle. Um, so it's you know quite a lonely area of the ship everywhere else on the ship kind of feels like it's it's built for like like mark was saying like wow, family just going up. whereas this is kind of very purposeful you, you know what you're getting into as soon as you walk in that room and obviously the exterior shell there when all said would, done would open up and reveal yeah. you to the that's yeah absolutely my kidding? So, they didn't need to put a new concept ship out all they had to do was do a 20 minute look at the merchant man and then put it up for sale. An interesting thing about the, the turret, because it, it's probably some people are going to be curious about is how it actually works because the, there's no big arm there behind it or anything like that. Once again, it's using alien technology that's keeping it up in place, which is what the plinth is for behind it. And there's an air shield that will be going around the top of here so that when you actually enter the turret, you're not um, venting the entirety of the room. Um, Obviously, that does mean that people could try and sneak onto your ship, but while your turret's manned, that might not be the safest thing for them to do. <sighs> I love that Xi'an fight of the navigator tech. Moving down from the actual bridge area, we then move into the sanctuary. So the Banu are known for... Picos? ...being very multicultural when it comes to their religious like beliefs. The kind of place so Pico would hang out. they have a 
entire area dedicated to worship, to fortune, to hoping that things are going to go well for them or that the next trade deal is going to be a good one. So this is sort of at the end of the Tree of Life, which is how the entire ship's built around. And it makes sense for it to be at the end of the tree because it, it's where everything like comes Like a special from. chair where you so go and hope for all the good things. It's important to keep that feel that it runs through the root of the ship. Going off the side of the sanctuary area, we have the med bay, something that people are very curious about where it actually was. Um, it's just off to the side, just behind the bridge, just near where all of the actual habitation is. You have a primary medical care bed, which will Even the do your day-to-day -day actual cool. healing. Look at that. Their style is so... I mean, obviously they're going for organic, but I love how layered it is. And then you have recovery beds similar to the ones we have on the Carrick. Now, Ooh, rather than just being bed. a bed, decide to try something a little different. It's now these pools of healing gel that you lie in just to healing recover juice. from any significant operation that you had. Yeah, I think I think yeah, this was again an excuse to kind of just push the ship away from what we're used to seeing. Um, so originally we had like the three beds lined up in here, and you know it was functional. It was you know it still looked good. It was just like oh, do you know it'd be really nice though, if these you know if you you had your operation and then you know you just sink down into that recovery pool. And, but yeah, what is it for I'm though? Strippings with goo. Like what's yep. recovery? Exactly. Secretly took behind. Y'all can't just drop terms on us like that and not tell us whether or not it's an actual thing or is this just like flare? If it's just flare, I don't know. Maybe they, we could have had other medical beds in there. The actual medical section is where the actual medical officer would work. So it, it's his main station, as well as storage supplies for whatever medical supplies that he needs. Obviously, at the moment, it's just the back of the bed, but it's where you re do refills on the bed or anything else that you'd need to do. Obviously, the doors across the entire ship are very alien in appearance. So though they they make sense, but at the same time, like you you. It was very important that you're going across this to make everything make sense to the human eye, but at the same time be so different. So you, you immediately recognize it as a door, but once it starts actually animating and doing something, it, it feels completely alien. And even doing the general design of the ship, it was important to keep that consistent, something that is easily recognizable, but also completely different to what people expect. Moving on from the shrine area, we move into the recreation and social habitation recreation. area. Recreation. Looking at star maps, super recreational activities. So you've got your food maker, along with areas to actually eat, as well as the actual social area. So people can sit around, talk, plan stuff out. Talk about planets. And I think, yeah, one of the, like, yeah, you see how fast that one's orbiting? Woo! Last Tuesday holds nothing to that. Super social. One of the things that we, we try to tackle here is obviously we have some very strict metrics for our human characters. And the, the Banu is a, a race are generally a bit taller, a bit larger. Um, so there's that kind of balance between making things um, work for both scales of character and, and making sure that, you know, um, we don't end up with, you know... Like Just for the record, the, the comment about 90% of the ship being decoration that's the point of this ship. I think people should definitely realize that a lot of the ships in this game are not function over form. There are full-on brands in this game that are made specifically just for, for, for cool freaking ships. Because that's generally, that's what the lore is about. That's the, the player that they're targeting. Like, this is a ship that comes, this is the pinnacle of spaceships for a species that holds a ton of value on opulence. So this this is everything that they have in their culture is poured into this to make it beautiful and amazing and something they can show off. So ships like this are meant to be wastes of space. They're meant to be ridiculous. And, and somebody who wants to do something that is effective, that is efficient, shouldn't be looking at a ship like this. They should be looking at a cargo hauler if they want to do something selling related in a in a more efficient way this is like a this is this is practically a yacht with like an extra shop in the back say so like the, the 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 child in the sea i remember we brought it up in one of the the um the update meetings and you know the the consensus was well yeah, this is a banu ship and whilst they support all the other races that, that we have in our universe um ultimately it's their ship 
and so things should be made to to their scale directly off the habitation area we have a secondary control for the hangar section so if someone needs to actually be en- allowed to enter into the hangar wow. you have a separate control room to allow you to that's a big open fucking hangar room. doors that's a hangar the bay? additional ship to come in once again oh my gosh. standard doors but the the whole animation all of it's very alien and obviously yeah when we get to kind of final art we'll dress this up so it's it you know um, there does look to be some uh, functionality there because uh, we don't want it all to be um, yeah, space magic. Um, it still needs to feel like there is kind of mechanisms there that are supporting these these things lifting. And, the fact and, that they put a um, ship hanging on this ship kind is of hover kind of crazy. And, and float. Coming off the habitation area, we have two staff lifts. So these ones would be specifically for the staff to allow them to move around the ship a lot easier. Um, we'll, we'll come back to them later because there's a, a better point to show them, but they just give you more access just because of the size of the ship. We needed to have multiple ways to get up and down. Otherwise, if you want to get from one part to another, you'd have to run the entire length of the ship, go down the floor to run the entire length again. So we added multiple ways to move up and down between the ship. So at the rear here, we have the staff, uh, sorry, we have the crew specific lift. This has access to all of the floors. That unlike doesn't look the like a Banu lift. UI. I don't believe This it. is the passenger. Nope entrance area so the lift uh, will go to this floor for all of the passengers which then gives them a little foyer area before they enter whatever floor i'm not gonna lie if you took this and turned it like made it purple in color i would think this was like something from the zerg in starcraft just got that feel to me this floor for all of the passengers which then gives them a little foyer area before they enter whatever floor they're on whoa we have the meeting area so this is the conference room where important delegates would come to discuss significant delegates. trade negotiations rather than I'm going by a power plant, I'm going to buy fuel. This is where serious conversations and serious negotiations go on. Yeah, this, is, this has got like a really nice view out over the um, like cargo hold as well, doesn't it? Yep. To the side of the actual meeting and delegation room, we have the VIP suites. So obviously your VIP delegates are going to want something a bit nicer, a bit more special when it comes to where they're resting. Yeah, look so at the pillows. That's VIP. VIP right there. Look at how many pillows they get. VIP delegates are going to want something a bit nicer, a bit more special when it comes to where they're resting. So they have their own private chambers so that they can rest and relax and freshen up before they actually go and do That's a cool desk. any significant meetings. I'd take and that again, desk. This, this, game on this that. This sort of room highlights um, a lot of the... Uh, I guess the shape language and the difficulties on the ship is that there, there, you know, everything's curved, everything flows, and and there is that kind of like real kind of like leading um, shapes that kind of like lead you through the ship, as opposed to you know what we're so used to on on a lot of our uh, human manufactured ships, whereas you know everything's hard and, and angled and flat. Um, really, the only thing in this ship that's flat is the floor. Stupid humans. So the hard angled and flat has one seat at the top for the actual mediator, which obviously would be a member of the crew, and then even number of seats on either side for the delegates to have their discussions. From the actual meeting room, you get a fantastic view of the cargo hold where all of your goods would actually be stored. They talked about that before. As you can see, the amount of cargo that the ship holds is colossal. Oh! And just the sheer volume of it gives you this cavernous, cathedral-like view of being stuck in the rafters of a... That looks like the um, that scene from Harry Potter, the one where they're running around and there's like the balls, the the glass balls up on the on the shelves. What is it? The Ministry of Magic Vault something. You know the thing. You Harry Potter fans know what I'm talking about. That's so much storage. How much SCU does this ship have? A warehouse worth of stock. Yeah, it gives you a real sense of how tall the ship actually is. Oh my uh, when gosh. When we get to the, the, the market. Um, you kind of get a glimpse at that, but it's not until you get into somewhere like this that spans the whole, or not even the whole height. You've got the hanger above the, the height of this. That is insane. Um, the, the, how, that's how crazy. Is. That's got to be, the, that's the biggest cargo hold we've seen so far, right? Like, by far. I think the only thing that comes close to that was the star lifter, and that's just nowhere near that size. Dang. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I wonder how this stacks up against like a whole C in terms of cargo capacity. Well, we're not going to be able to go through every single room and nook and cranny today. This is too big a ship. So let's go to the market now and take a look at that. So I think um, yeah, this is 
what a lot of the kind of customers are going to see when they first walk into the ship is this sort of like reveal um, of the market area and what we try to do in, in in this area is um kind of everywhere you walk into it you're kind of um walking through a, a small tunnel or you know quite a tight space so that when you kind of do walk into it it does then open up and you can see that sort of like that that grandeur and that height of the ship and you know this is only two out of i think it's five or six floors at this point of of you know the, the part of the ship you're in um but i think it's just a nice kind of like the, 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 the overall kind of uh, again, just repeating that that size and that verticality that, that we see in the other areas of the ship. So for anybody who doesn't know the the role of this ship, I think I kind of mentioned it before, it's essentially a traveling bazaar. So the Banu are a um, commerce species. They're very much into trade, finding valuable things, uh, hawking those valuable things off to other things. They're also very community-based. So they built this massive ship that they could use to not only bring people onto the ship for community communal times and family visits, but also, you know, if you want to sell some stuff to that family, no, like it also allows them to have this sort of marketplace here where you can have shops that, um, will sell their own wares, things that you find in the dark corners of this, of the system, things that you've bought off of people at the end of a mission, things that are pretty rare. They sit in these shops. We don't really know how the gameplay will work. I'm assuming you'll be able to bring NPCs into the shops so that they can facilitate the exchanges. Maybe they'll just have kiosks. That seems like it would kind of destroy the experience. So I don't know exactly how it'll work, but the idea is that NPCs and players alike should be able to come here and buy stuff from the ship itself. So you can go and park out somewhere in space, or you could be nomading back and forth between places in space put on a beacon, give out a call. I don't know what exactly it would be, but let people know you're there. Come dock with me, come visit me, see my wares, buy my stuff, give me money. So that's kind of the idea behind this ship. Um, I think we've already shown a lot of the concept art of this area already, um, but the idea here is that you've got oh, this- yeah, look at yeah. that security gun up top too. Just in case your family gets too annoying. Hollow in the we middle. We all have that uncle. Kind of, yeah, will allow um, the the- uh, the traders to kind of show off some of their um, items that might not fit in the shops or might be, you know, too valuable to place in the shops. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a very exciting area of the ship, this part. Okay, and the last area we want to show you today is is kind of the area that we spent a little bit more time on. It's a little bit further along. We try to take some areas and, and push their visuals so we've got a good understanding of, of how much work's involved and, you know, what the kind of like the final... Actually, the Reclaimer might have a big bigger cargo than the Starlifter. So might the 890 Jump. But still, they're all pretty small compared to this. That's for sure. Ship is actually going to look like um, because it is such a large ship and there's going to be a lot of people ultimately working on it. I think it's good to have that kind of key area that you can kind of refer to as, as you know, yeah, this this is what the merchantman's all about. And whilst each area of the ship will have its own feel, will have its own kind of uh, style and in its own forms, um, I think this is a good indication of... Um, the kind of elegance and you know if you imagine this is the this crew the bedroom area this is a crew area. the uh guest area is going to be a level above this um i think it gives you a good idea of, of what we're aiming for wow the other thing is with the banu that they're, they're very communal in how they actually live their lives so it didn't make sense to have separate quarters or separate captain's quarters because that's just not how they live and getting the, the the social pit for them to be able to sit around and talk and relax and socialize it, I would hate it was this. an important thing to make sure that we got in um getting jedi temple vibes i've seen i've seen the jokes of that also a little bit of, i feel like it's I, I get heavy heavy sense of avatar just seems like their design style kind of i don't know what the name of the species is in that movie but i'm getting the vibes what is that in the middle though is that like a hot tub you just go from bed to seat to hot tub to selling how does that flow work? The space needs to feel fine and elegant, but also homely. And that's pretty much where we're up to with the Banning Merchantman at the moment. Um, this is kind of as hot off the press as it comes. There's a lot of areas of the ship we've not shown yet. We're really happy with the, the progress we've made so far, but at the moment we are kind of at that point where we've got a, a skeleton crew just kind of working out everything that we need to get done to deliver the ship when time permits we'll be able to ramp that up and bring bring on more of the team to kind of get through the amount of work that's that's involved 
super excited with where it's up to. I think it's going to be so one of those that kind of stand out, one of those Hallmark ships that kind of defines what Star Citizen is. Yeah. When this comes it out, shows that it might not be the most useful ship, it might not be the most popular ship, but I think this will probably arcs. be the most impressive ship that's been made for a video game. So what did we learn this week? Well, she may not look like much just yet. It still has a long journey ahead of her. But if the Banner Defender before her is any indication, and given its sheer size and scale, the Banu Merchantman seems like it's going to shape up to be a landmark ship for Star Citizen when all is said and done. And as part of Alien Week, there are also these rad new paints available for select ships that you can see here. So check those out. It's, Gotta have the you know, paints. Looking sweet as all heck is something you're interested in. Gotta be some new for paints. For Inside Star There's Citizen, no new I'm Jared Huckabee. New We're paints. still here on the eighth floor of the Manchester Goods Yard building, the second floor of the upcoming new UK office, and this is where I'm told CR's office is going to be when he visits. Dude, pour some concrete and get your hands on it. Do something that's permanent that he won't find for years. Also, this weekend was the first the International Bar Citizen Weekend. So here's some imagery from the gatherings near studios around the world. And don't forget to let us know on social where your events are being held at, as we're going to be sending folks to select locations throughout the remainder of this year. Nice. We'll see you all next week. If you haven't already, I put out a podcast episode earlier this week with Joe Run and Stim Citizen from the Yacht Club. They did a lot of the groundwork to get Bar Citizen to be a thing uh, way back in the day. We talk a lot about that. We talk about the community and Star Citizen, how it's grown and changed and more. If you'd like to check that out on the second channel here or in audio, audio things, uh, platforms, Apple, Amazon, Spotify, anything that you like to listen to. But next, next podcast is going to be uh, a good one. I'll say that much. But yeah, this has been Inside Star Citizen. Pretty cool look at the Merchant Man. I'm not going to get one. <laughs> it's way too big for me. But it's an impressive ship, and I'm looking forward to hearing what they do with it. I think it's going to be the coolest ship in terms of design, but I'm still waiting to hear more about gameplay. And it sounds like so are they. So we'll see what they have to say later this year. I'm sure they've got stuff in design, but they haven't quite put it in the game to figure out if it actually works. And I'm thinking it will be a little while until we hear about that. But... um that's about it, guys. So until the next Inside Star Citizen, I'll catch you later. <laughs>